This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Happy Aloha Friday and welcome to Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Hawaii program. This is your host, Beatrice Cantelmo. Today's episode is devoted to democracy and we will have a very special guest with us, Laura Nevitt, Executive Director of the Democratic Party of the State of Hawaii. Join us in this exciting and candid dialogue about the state of democracy in the U.S. under the Trump administration and about what the Democratic Party of Hawaii is up to and much more. On that note, welcome to our show, Laura. Hello, for having me. This is fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. So to our viewers who do not know much about you, just give us a little blurb. <laughs> I will try to keep it short. Uh, so my name is Laura Nevitt. I um, came here in February to take over as executive director of the Democratic Party Hawaii. First time they've had a full-time paid executive director in forever. So finally um, decided to put some resources into that. So that's kind of exciting. I come out of campaign work. So I really have spent 20 years doing political campaigns, um, candidates, progressive democratic candidates, and issues um, all kind of all over the country. I've worked in Minnesota and Wisconsin and Michigan and Louisiana and Washington State and Ohio and Iowa. So kind of been all over doing primarily like it's a candidate work and electing Democrats mm -hmm. to office um, and a couple of issue advocacy um, pieces. So kind of this is my life and what I've done and um, love party politics. So that's kind of my passion. It's where I come from. And when after this last election, I was kind of horribly devastated by uh, the loss um, for many reasons, not just from a party standpoint, but from a gender standpoint as well. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of crawled into a bed after election day, and it took me about a month to crawl back. A million of us. I mean, a lot of us did. <laughs> and it, want to. Yeah, um, even after, yeah, and so it took me about a month to crawl back out again. And when I kind of looked at what I wanted to do, I knew I wanted to go work for a party, a state party, instead of going back to campaign work. Mm -hmm. uh, so Hawaii just ended up coming up on my list looking for an executive director. So I, I, I applied on a lovely whim. And lo and behold, they decided to hire me. Lucky for our state <laughs> yeah. to so, have you. Yeah, it's, it's been a, quite a, a joyous ride. I, enjoy, I love being here. I love our members. I love the work that we do. Um, and we're really in a state of trying to rebuild a state party that, this is going to sound really strange, but because it's so blue here, uh, it's an inactive party. They just haven't felt the need that they need to because what does it matter? We elect Democrats either way. And so trying to figure out how to move members into action around legislation or just helping you know, the rest of the country. We did phone banking into congressional districts that were um, special elections this past mm -hmm. year. Um, and, try, and trying to get people used to actually doing stuff again. So that's kind of where we're at. Very exciting. Yeah. So, well, let's talk a little bit about uh, the Democratic Party's role with regards to not only working with constituents, but also mm -hmm. uh, elected representatives right now who are democratic, but <laughs> are they really, yeah, they really embracing well, that, democratic values right. and bills? And exactly. Well, this is the challenge, right? So you have, uh, what most people don't understand is while elected officials run as Democrats, we don't own them as a party, right? They mm -hmm. run as a, as a Democrat, yeah. but they are elected by their constituents, and so they, they really answer to that constituency because that's who elected them. Our work is, you know, to grow our membership, have our members be someone that push on elected officials. We have legislative priorities that are important to us. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, we hope that as you're going to run as a Democrat and put a D next to your name, that you're going to carry our mantle of what's important to us. That doesn't always happen. And so, mm -hmm. um, but when you don't have an active membership, there's there's no right? accountability. There's no, no, there's no, you know, that push and pull kind of has yeah. to happen. In a healthy democracy, you would have lots of things. You would have an active Republican Party. You would have active members. You would have elected officials that you're in conversation with, um, and you're all working together to kind of come up with. Um, good policies that affect people's lives. Exactly. Right. So. Right. Um, and in Hawaii, it's an interesting thing. While um, you know, Democrats own the majority of elected seats, mm -hmm. 
you, you've kind of lost the active membership in the Democratic Party, like I said, out of this sense of apathy, like why should we bother a Democrat gets elected either way? Um, and so that, and you, you certainly don't have an active Republican Party at all, right? They hold four mm -hmm. seats in the House and that's like it. And so, uh, you know, this loss of kind of tension that is what, to me, drives conversation, mm -hmm. drives the ability to kind of push someone, whether it's an elected, you know, on whatever level, to say, you know, hey, this is, you know, um, and so we're trying to change that. We're trying to change that the, we're having better conversations with our elected officials, mm -hmm. we're engaging our members, we're holding discussions and forums around issues as we get ready to go into a legislative session, right? Teach our folks how to like track legislation that they're interested in, you know, make sure you're in contact with your legislator, know how to get in contact with them, all those kinds of things, you know, which stuff that has not been happening over the years. So it's really back to the basics, which for me is kind of fun. It's about teaching people people how to be civically engaged again. Exactly. Right? So at that core, that is fundamentally what we should all be doing anyway, right? Mm -hmm. And to me, in a true democracy, that's how you understand what people want, what the majority want, and that's how we should legislate. And so, but if you don't have that happening, you then end up legislators just kind of Rule the doing, doing their thing. Um, and so we as a party have to be better about them hearing from our members. So, Excellent. and then and then in election time that we're out helping them get elected or not, right? Depending on, mm -hmm. um, and we're out knocking on doors and we're talking to our neighbors and we're having conversations and this is what the Democratic Party is about and support, right? So all of that stuff kind of has to get reactivated um, with the Democratic mm -hmm. Party in Hawaii. So, it's so kind of fun. sounds like you're going to be very busy. I am very busy. It's very in inspiring. A, it, in, a, in a good way. It's yeah. the work that I like to do. Um, and in some ways it's, better for me no longer to not to advocate for a specific candidate but really i'm advocating for democracy mm -hmm. i'm advocating that we be an engaged community around issues that are important to us right. so let's talk a little bit about the core priorities that the democratic party holds right now <laughs> oh, oh goodness i well for a while at least yeah exactly <laughs> well we actually have you know we have a platform that we vote on every two years at mm -hmm. our state convention which will be happening next year and so that's an ongoing thing that you know if you wanted to go to www.hawaiidemocrats.org you could look up our platform and resolution and those are our things that we we fight for at a legislative level. Um, generally speaking, you know, we're about social justice and taking care of people and um, making sure that every, that, you know, there's equity across the board for um, folks that are disenfranchised and doing that kind of work and mm -hmm. um, making sure we're taking care of our kapuna and, um, you know, our native Hawaiian uh, family and doing all those kinds of things. So it's really, you know, a lot of if you look at that platform and those resolutions, it really is about taking care of each other and making sure we all have opportunity and access to to everything equally, that there's, you know, trying to strike a balance. And so mm -hmm. that's generally. So you just moved here mm -hmm. in February. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes it's really nice to have an outside, a fresh look yeah. mm -hmm. of a certain state. I'm also not from here. I've been here for three years yeah. now. Yeah. What was it about Hawaii that you thought was together, and what's the reality? <laughs> <laughs> what were the things that you found? They're like, oh. <laughs> well, I think anytime anybody applies for a job in Hawaii, it really is like, oh my god, I could go work in Hawaii. Like it's this dream, kind of this idea of a dream place. You're going to mm -hmm. go be in a tropical. It's paradise. It's paradise, yeah. right? Aloha every day. <laughs> exactly. So um, you're like, well, you know, why wouldn't I do that, right? That'd be awesome. Right. Um, and some of that is true, right? <clears throat> and it's certainly in terms of weather and, you know, being on the ocean, uh, you know, those are the things for me. I'm, I'm very much affected by my surroundings, so I, I love mm -hmm. that, and that I can be outside every day. I come from Minnesota, so this time of year it's we cold would, in Minnesota. It would be starting to get cold, <laughs> and layers would be happening, and the start to shut the windows and the doors and yeah. you think. So I love that I don't have to do that. Uh, but the things that I that I found. Um, one that were the same anywhere I've been. Like I said, I've lived in many different states. Um, it's kind of the inside politics that happens. Party politics mm -hmm. is kind of interesting and kind of the factioning and 
everybody thinks that they're, you know, we're way different than everybody else. And the reality is, I mean, you, in that in that arena, you're not, right? Mm -hmm. That is, politics is politics. I don't care where you go. <laughs> so, so we're right on the curve. Right <laughs> now. Other studies. Yeah, you're, you're right where everybody else is. Uh, I think the downside, like I said, is the inactivity over the years mm -hmm. has caused um, some inability to have um, probably some real political push where you would in other places, but that's you know something you can you know totally fixable and with right. work and building um, you change that and that's what we're working on and that's yeah. really exciting to Absolutely. see happening as members are like I just had a district chair in the other day and we've been putting together these manuals to like because the number one thing I heard when I got here is like we don't know what we're supposed to do like nobody's told us what we're supposed to do besides show up for a meeting and even that mm -hmm. we're not really sure so we actually said okay well, let's work with that let's exactly. let's give you instructions right Civic so we engagement 101 right so we put together you know we put together these binders that were that we're getting ready to actually to pass out to all our districts that like from a constitutional bylaw standpoint here's your job duties if you get elected as a you you know, let's say a district treasurer, like what is it you're supposed to do? What are you responsible for, right? And then here's some best practices, right? So giving them some guidelines and we go through the entire state party structure and like lay it out for them. And then we're giving them stuff about why you should organize and how to organize in your community, right? Mm -hmm. And then just contact information for their state central committee and their state legislators and their like, like you know, so it's, kind of this really good resource thing that they can have in their district that they can use if they have questions, um, that, you know. And, and I, so I was just going through this with the district chair, and they were just like, oh my god, this is fantastic. And, like, and I'm like, yeah, this is kind of, you know, we're like said, we're really back to basics, but sometimes you got to do that. Absolutely. That's just the nature of the beast. You kind of, when apathy happens, that's, you got to go back and start mm -hmm. over. And, well, the part of the apathy also has a lot to do with complacency, yeah. you know, when you feel so secure. Right. Uh, you know, that nothing is going to change for much worse, or, or that it right. may not change for the right. better either. You right. just kind of plateau there. Yeah. Uh, and so then those very basic yeah. uh, knowledge, you know, gets lost in the trenches. Yeah. I actually have a suggestion for you. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, in Wisconsin, you know, where I lived in Madison, and one of the things that... Um, uh, the community did a lot was working with the kids starting at elementary school level yes to not only help them yeah. uh, understand mm -hmm. how the entire process works what is the role of each right. representative right and also what they could do so even though they can't vote I mean it's yeah, quite yeah. an amazing practice to how to be yeah, engaged some good go back to, to yeah. civics 101 in school which yeah, they exactly. stopped teaching a long time ago yeah, yeah. the challenge is is most schools don't want a partisan group to come in mm -hmm. um, so we don't often get to go do that because they don't that makes them very uncomfortable because it feels too political. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but you know, there's working with like League of Women Voters and other organizations that are non nonprofits to or to bipartisan, come. perhaps. Or bipartisan. Yeah. And that's what I said. You know, how you get around that is go ahead and invite the Republican executive director or Republican chair, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and have us both come in and talk about the difference exactly. between parties. And, yeah. But because really it is, it's about how do you engage in this. The, we know that the earlier you can teach someone to be participating and voting, if they can get them right out of the gate, they become lifelong. Right. And they have to grow up in a family where it's an important aspect of, right? Exactly. Like I grew up, my dad wasn't particularly political, but I just always remember him, you know, you always wouldn't vote it. They never talked about it per se, but just even the act that I knew every year, like this was, it was voting day. Um, so I remember on my 18th birthday, I was off and cut my college. And while having never, like my parent, he didn't never took me to the voting booth, but I just remember that my first 18th birthday, I got to go vote. Like, I got to go vote. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was a big deal. It was a yeah. big deal. And I'm just having that thing. I'm like, I don't remember anybody explaining that to me per se, like explicitly. But I just was like, it was just because I grew up in a family where like voting was what you did. That's right? Wonderful. It was just part of life, right? So the sooner you can get folks to do that. Um, so yeah, anytime you can get to kids early. Absolutely. Um, especially if they grow up in a family where their parents don't vote. So you have to get at them some other way. So, so we're going to take a quick break sure. and we'll be right back. Yeah. Hi, 
I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. Welcome back to Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Hawaii. This is your host Beatrice Contamo, and we are here with Laura Nevit, Nevit, Nevit. Yeah. Uh, Executive Director of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. So here we are talking about democracy and mm -hmm. voting, which is something that you know it comes so naturally, and yet so many people don't vote. Right or disengaged politically, mm -hmm. and we often forget how much we can take that for granted yeah. because of the privilege of living in a democratic country. Mm -hmm. I grew up, uh, my formative years were spent in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And so until 1985, it was in, under a military dictatorship regime, mm -hmm. so we, we had no democracy right. for decades, like I think right. most whole decades. Yeah. And I remember as a child, you know, being in awe and admiring, you know, democratic countries and the United States being one of those countries mm -hmm. that I, you know, so much aspired, you know, that our country in Brazil would be more like, you know, in terms of democracy. And, right. you know, I think, think my generation, like everybody was just yeah. so pumped and ready to right. be on the streets, to be civically engaged, to finally be able to learn about democracy and to be able to vote. Right. You know, I was able to vote at the age of 18 for the mm. first time. Mm. So proud. Yeah, that was <laughs> proud, you know? um, Like to think about my mother and my father, mm. where they really never had a chance right. until 85 to really vote. And yeah. it's a huge thing. Well, I think, you know, we need more people like you in our lives, like the, where they come from places. I was, before we, while we were break, I was, telling you we have an intern at the office who's from Tonga and they just switched from being a monarchy to a parliamentary democracy uh, and so part of why he came to intern when I you know I he, he's a student at BYU which is why I kind of was like interesting I'm not generally known to be Democrats so I sat with him one day and was just like okay I kind of have to ask like what made you want to come you know in intern time. at the Democratic Party of Hawaii given kind of political right not that I want to make an assumption about all you know BYU folks but mm -hmm. generally they tend not to uh, and so he said to me that he's like yeah you know I'm from Tonga this thing happened they're in their first year of transition and he is just passionate about wanting to be able learning everything he can about democracy because he, when he's go, he'll go home. He's in his senior year. He'll go home, and wanting to really make sure it sticks, right? That they, that you know, we can continue a democracy. And when he said, you know, when I researched kind of both political parties, it ended up being kind of a no-brainer about which one more embraced that ideal than the other. And so I was like, wow. <laughs> I was like, right. okay, that's. I mean, talk about inspiring. I mean, those are the things. I get to do every day. I, we recently met with a bunch of um, wonderful gentlemen from India who came over through the state, through a leadership program through the State Department, mm -hmm. and so got to sit and talk with them about how democracy works in their country uh, and the gender. In, you know, they, they were talking about the idea that they're actually trying to pass legislation that minimally requires that 33% of their parliament be women. <laughs> Right, uh, with a goal of getting to 50 at, at some point, mm -hmm. and so we talked about you know that how that was different from a country like America, where we're one of the only industrialized countries to never have elected a woman as president. So let's talk about that. <laughs> yes. I know it's so nice. And you know, might as well. Okay, yeah. Hillary, Bernie Sanders, what happened? <laughs> I 
think part of it, you know, it's an interesting, I, I had last year an opportunity that I kind of got to live in both camps for a while. So um, I, uh, lots of very dear friends of mine, Hillary supporters, I, I, have, I, I was never an anti-Hillary. I've admired her for years as a woman in politics. Uh, not that I've ever experienced anything at the scale she has. I at least understand where that comes mm -hmm. from, that um, misogyny in politics. And so it's it's a struggle, and so it's hard. So I've always just really that her fortitude is amazing. Uh, but I ended up going to work for Bernie Sanders for a while. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and didn't I last? I was there for about six months, um, and ended up having. I, I hate to say it because I don't want anybody to think this is like Bernie's fault in particular, but mostly because of the people he tends to hire. Had probably one of the worst experiences on a political campaign I've ever had. <laughs> so, and really had a gentleman who um, just some horrible, crazy stuff. But so kind of left that um, after having built up kind of the Bernie movement in Minnesota and kind of basically having it ripped away from me and mm -hmm. um, in some pretty bad ways. But I think kind of, kind of, kind of left the scene for a while because I didn't want to, uh, you know, people who were supporting another candidate support, you know, again, whoever's going to inspire you to be engaged, I want you to do that, right? Mm -hmm. But I, in the end, kind of came back to Hillary um, because a lot of it around gender politics that mm -hmm. I just really, as much as I, I can appreciate the economic inequality message Bernie had, he never understood, well, I don't know that he understood, but didn't seem willing to really be able to connect how gender and race impacted that inequality. Mm -hmm. And he really kind of wanted to erase that from the equation and really just said, if we if we fixed income inequality, that would fix everything else. No, there's so much more right? to and that. I was like, all the no, it actually doesn't. And racism so, Yeah, you can't, I as a woman, cannot disconnect my gender and what happens to me as a woman and how it impacts how much money I can make. I cannot separate those two things. Mm -hmm. As a woman of color, I'm sure that, that you even have the added, right? Oh, yes. And, and an immigrant on top of it. And an immigrant on top of it. <laughs> so it was really um, hard to like talk, to like get his supporters or even, I, I think he understood it in some ways because he did. And he did end up surrounding himself with a couple of really amazing women, like Simone, Simone Sanders and a couple other people. But generally, he always seemed to kind of miss the mark on that piece. Mm -hmm. And so, for me, ultimately, because I felt like he really couldn't get there, I just, in the end, and I, and you know, quite, you know, also felt like in the end, he really was about. Because uh, when he started the campaign, one of the reasons I could be supportive was we have to make sure a Democrat wins the White House. Mm -hmm. and that's how we started. And at the end, it became, it was about Bernie winning the White House. And mm -hmm. I it was, like, that and just kind of the gender stuff, I realized I couldn't, um, I kind of came back. And then, you know, she went on to win the nomination. And I just honestly, I was one of those people that I'm like, well, having watched Donald Trump, who was like, I just, there was a piece of me that I honestly just was like, there's no way. No, Biden. There's no way this was going to be that we would elect this man, given all of the stuff we knew about him, especially with the, um, the, you know, the tapes about the sex scandal, all the kind of stuff. And I was like, and I was like there's no way yeah. that we will elect. I mean, just as a country, I just couldn't. And so I, you know, so when he ultimately did win, like it, there were two things. It was just the loss itself. But it also was the gut punch of a country saying to millions of women, it was more more important that we elect that. I don't know. I don't know how to phrase this in the right way, so this might come wrong. But the idea that like we still couldn't elect a woman, and so no matter how qualified and awesome and whatever she was. There, you know, when our choices were this woman and this horrible man, we went with the horrible man. Mm -hmm. And I just don't under think a lot of people, whether you voted for him or not, understood the impact really of that. And mostly because we live in still 
horribly misogynistic yeah, society. Very patriarchal society. Very patriarchal. Yeah. And, you know, I thought about back in 2008 when Obama and Clinton ran, and I said to folks then, I'm like, we will we will go with Obama because we will we will elect a black man before we elect a woman. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but I thought, you know, with at least that step, the next step, maybe we'd be okay. But instead, we went even farther backwards as a reaction to kind of that. Um, and, and sadly, we're all going to pay the price for that, mm -hmm. right? in ways that I just don't even think, I mean, we're even seeing it the last couple of days. Um, every day, it feels like, is an onslaught on our oh, freedoms, on democracy, is completely democracy under attack. right, um, our yeah. constitution, our country, everything, everything we value. This man and this administration and this GOP Congress just have no, no, regard, no yeah. regard for whatsoever. And it's more important for them to stay in power and pass tax reform for their rich friends than it is to actually take care of people, mm -hmm. the average person. And I think like one of the positives of the despair of mm -hmm. Trump administration, whether even if you are a Republican supporter, is that the policies are impacting yeah. people across yeah, parties. Yeah. I mean, and so at the one level, I hope that there will be chances for reparations where both parties will have to work in the bipartisan level, which I don't know if it's possible under this administration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also igniting people who were either complacent mm -hmm. about being civically engaged right. or who, you know, were involved but maybe go a step right. further. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. really looking that this is so beyond the, Mm -hmm. uh, the gender issues, I mean, which is big. I mean, women are being, you know, so attacked under oh, this administration, every, but every so are minorities, oh. so, uh, you know, immigrants and the poor, the middle class. Well, There's well, really not much. There isn't. And I think in some ways, you want a, a glaring example of all of that. Just look at Puerto Rico. Yes. Right. You have. Florida and Texas, who experienced the same devastation, um, and you look at the different responses, and to me that is purely, one, I think we literally have people in Congress and our president who don't understand that Puerto Rico is actually part of America, uh, but I think it also has more to do with their brown people, and we don't care. Yeah. And so, like... It's the part of institutionalized racism yes. and how government parties right. can uh, continue mm -hmm. to reinforce that pattern right. and not wanting to revisit it right. oh, yeah. and, and fix it. Right. Because it's not a problem to those who right. don't see it and don't want to right. see it. It doesn't affect so me at all, so exactly. why do I care, right? And it's very hard. I can't believe how quickly our show oh. ended. <laughs> I'm so to go. I know. We have to come back. Please do. Okay. We can have lots of conversations. I would love to have yeah, you back as time. many times as you wish. Bring guests along. <laughs> Let's have you know live conversations about this. Yeah. Bring a Republican. Uh, get in it. I know. Like, I actually don't know any here, which is really funny. I actually know a couple back in Minnesota, but I haven't run across. Oh, we can any. connect with them on yeah. Skype and you know really yeah. have good forums. You right. know, but I mean, thank you so oh, much for being here. So <laughs> welcome, sister. <to> yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, that concludes uh, another episode of uh, Perspectives on Global Justice, Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you so very much, our viewers, for watching us today. I hope that this program was inspiring to you. Uh, plug along and uh, be engaged, be involved, uh, and see you next Friday. Ahui ho.